Hey guys, welcome to the next LARP Shire video. I'm Ben. I'm Abby. And today we're going to discuss how to improve your role playing skills. No matter what LARP you attend, you can be sure that the individuals who organized it have put a ton of time and effort into making it the best it can be. Please do everything you can to read and understand all the rules, details, and logistics they provide you. This will allow everybody to be on the same page and will help maximize fun for all. You don't want to bury all the good parts of your character in their backstory. A lot of role players when they build a character want them to have an interesting backstory, but a backstory is only as good as it can be expressed in the present. If your character's backstory is more interesting than their future, you've got a problem. A good backstory will inform a character's actions in the present and those connections can be seen by other players in game. Okay, let's talk about genre. When you attend a LARP, you're making a commitment to leave the ordinary and mundane behind and step into another world. That being said, it's critical for you to understand that world. Every LARP is different, and subsequently every LARP world is different. In a post-apocalyptic LARP, for instance, what type of people can you imagine living on a planet that's ravaged by nuclear war? What would motivate these people? What do they fear? What do they covet? These are just a few questions you should be asking yourself when trying to formulate a character that can fit seamlessly into that fantasy world. You want to make a conscious decision to stay in character. This is really the first step of role playing and can be the hardest part, but once you've made that decision, it makes everything after it a lot easier. Almost everyone experiences some kind of nerves when they're first role playing for the first time and trying to get into character for the first time around a big group of people. Everyone experiences those nerves and it's really ideal to just fake it until you make it, until you're comfortable with it, until you start to enjoy it. You want your character to have feasible goals. If your character's dream, for example, is to kill everyone they know, that's not really an attainable goal. The best goals for your character to have that would motivate them would be a goal that is attainable and feasible in-game, but might have some sort of roadblock that's preventing them from reaching it. For example, maybe your character is trying to replace a family that they've lost with new friends, but everyone that they meet finds their personality to be irritating or grating. This is a pretty simplified example, but it's really good to have feasible or attainable goals that can be reached in-game that maybe have roadblocks that the character has to personally overcome in order to reach them. In many games, there can be times when the organizers or other NPCs will try to steer you in a certain direction for the good of the game. Maybe other players are trying to give you subtle hints to go along with a certain storyline that will help further their narrative. By learning to pick up on these hints and going along with them, you can oftentimes make the game more fun for you and others. And if you ever have no idea what's going on, just try and feel the energy of the group and go along with that. So join that angry mob, or accuse that suspicious character, or cheer for the Valiant Knight. Another idea is to make other characters necessary to your character's story. For example, if you're playing a thief that's trying to steal a precious artifact, it'll make your story much more interesting if you are involving an accomplice. Having to convince someone else to work with you or to attain the same goals that you're trying to attain adds a sense of urgency to your mission. In the same vein, in my experience, it makes the stakes higher and a lot more interesting to play out. Try giving your character morals and opinions. Morals and opinions add to the disposition of the character and will set them apart from other characters. 
For example, a character that feels very strongly about having no morals at all will be much more interesting than a character that acts good and has morals but has no real attachment to the idea of it. An evil character can even be really boring if they don't really have any dependence on the idea of what they're doing or any attachment to their own ideals. Giving a character feelings about violence, politics, relationships, work, anything will make them a lot more interesting and will also help you to have something to work off of when new situations arise. While keeping secrets in real life would often be practical, it's the kind of thing that can cripple a LARP. By not revealing any secrets, you can end up with a murder mystery where the murder is never solved, character backstories are never discovered, and the story dies before it's even begun. So don't be afraid of letting the cat out of the bag by telling someone that your fellow role player is actually a retired assassin from Southeast Asia. Another good idea is to build relationships with other characters. Having feelings with or friendships with other characters in your game immediately gives you a place to go off of when you're role playing with them. For example, if your character is very neat and tidy and they run into a character that's a slob, the way that they respond can help inform your gameplay. Maybe they feel the need to pick up after that person and tidy up after them, or maybe they feel the need to avoid and deride that person. Having your character experience admiration, respect, pity, or dislike towards other characters gives you a place to go off of when you're in different situations. So let's talk about sensing the spotlight. So not every scene in a LARP is going to be about your character, and that's okay. It's important that when it's your turn to be a supporting character, to do it cheerfully. The spotlight is a lot like a basketball during a game. Seize it, pass it, and always keep it moving. Jokes are fun to make. We love jokes. But jokes are much better when they're made in the appropriate setting. Out of character jokes, out of character, and in character jokes, in character. Some of the best jokes I've ever heard made at LARP were made by characters in character from their specific worldview. If you're fighting a goblin and you decide to tell that goblin that they look like Danny DeVito, you might want to save that joke for after LARP. Unless, of course, Danny DeVito exists in your LARP universe, in which case you have bigger problems than goblins. If the pressure becomes too much with staying in character, you can always step out into an out of character zone. Any LARP I've been to has had some kind of area or zone where you can step out to be out of character and to let some of the pressure off of yourself. It's always better to step out and take a break than to hurt someone else's immersion or to overwhelm yourself. All right, so we've covered a lot of topics in this video, but make sure you feel the liberty to throw out any of these ideas if you think it would make it more fun for you and the rest of the players. When it comes down to it, role playing is all about having fun, so make sure you don't miss out on that. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to leave a like and a comment and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we will see you in the next video. Every LARP is different, and subsequently, every LARP world is different. In a post a la a laka baka. <laughs> I knew that was going to trip me up. I